Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture. Today we will discuss polyatomic molecules. In the first lecture on rotation of spectroscopy, we discussed that for an extended rotating object, the angular velocity omega and the angular momentum L need not point in the same direction. In such cases, the angular momentum is related in general to the angular velocity by L equals I omega, where L and omega are vectors and the I is a tensor. So, tensor is represented generally by a matrix. In a three dimensional space, I is a three by three matrix, which means it has nine components. Thus, L equals I omega, vector L equals I, which is a tensor omega can be explicitly defined as in the x, y, z Cartesian coordinates, I can write L as L x, L y, L z equals, I will write first the omega which is a vector, which is omega x, omega y, omega z and then I have the tensor which is a 3 by 3 matrix. I have i x x, i y y, i z z. So, these are the diagonal elements and I have 6 of diagonal elements that is i x y, i x z, i y x, i y z i z x i z y. The values of the elements depend on the choice of the axis through the center of mass of the molecule. For a particular choice of axis, this matrix can become a diagonal matrix. That is the off diagonal terms that is the 6 of diagonal terms that we have will all become 0, but the diagonal terms will be non-zero. So, these axes are called A, B and C axis. So, the moment of inertia will be I A, I B and I C. So, this I A, I B and I C represent the moment of inertia along the A, B and C axis. Conventionally, the axis about which the moment of inertia has its maximum value. So, let us say the moment of inertia as I can write I A, I B, I C. So, if the moment of inertia has the maximum value, it is known as the C axis. So, we can write I C is maximum. The axis about which the moment of inertia has its lowest value is known as the A axis. So, we can write I A is minimum. So, these axis A and C along with the other axis that is B are known as the 
principal axis of inertia. So, we can write A, B and C as the principal axis of inertia and the corresponding moments of inertia that is I A, I B and I C are the principal moments of inertia. Thus, any rotating body or any rotating molecule has three values of I, I A, I B and I C and we can write I C greater than equal to I B greater than equal to I A. So, now we will start looking into this polyatomic molecules. So, we will start with the linear molecule. So, linear molecule either diatomic or linear polyatomic molecules. So, they are special cases where one of the axis is the axis of the molecule and it passes through the center of mass of the molecule and the other two axes are perpendicular to the molecular axis. So, the axis along the molecular axis, the moment of inertia along that axis that is I A here equals 0 and the I's along the other two directions that is I B and I C are equal. So, these molecules can be represented as I A equals 0, I B equals I C. In other words, there is only one value of I because I B equals I C. So, there is only one value of I for linear molecules and examples of polyatomic linear molecules are H C L, O C S, C O 2, but we should remember that C O 2 has no dipole moment. So, it will not show any rotational spectrum. So, in general any molecule can be classified as three top or rotor categories. So, one is spherical top or spherical rotor, then we have symmetric top or symmetric rotor and finally, we have asymmetric top or asymmetric rotor. So, we will look into these categories one by one. So, first let us focus on spherical rotor. So, spherical rotors can be octahedral or tetrahedral molecules. They are called spherical rotors as all three principal moments of inertia along the three principal axes are equal. So, we can write I A equals I B equals I C. As all the I's are equal, the choice of axis is immaterial. So, the examples of spherical rotors are methane that is CH4, SF6 and C60 that is fullerene. So, CH4 is a tetrahedral molecule, SF6 is an octahedral molecule and C60 is icosahedral. So, these molecules as you can see have no dipole moment and again they are not going to show a rotational spectrum. So, then 
let us move into symmetric rotors. For symmetric rotors, two of the principal moments of inertia are equal, but the third one is unequal. That way, we can think that linear molecules where we had I A equals 0, I B equals I C. So, this is for linear molecules. We can think that these linear molecules are a special case of symmetric tops. So, for symmetric tops or symmetric rotors, we have two types. We have prolate symmetric top and oblate symmetric top. So, we will first discuss prolate symmetric top. So, examples of prolate include CH3 C L. So, for prolates I A is less than I B and I B is equal to I C. So, the larger moment of inertia they are equal and I A is smaller than both I B and I C which are equal. So, just to reiterate the rotational axis goes through the center of mass but not through the central carbon atom for this molecule that is C H 3 C L. This is because these three hydrogen atoms actually are not in the same plane as that of the carbon atom. So, the other examples of prolate top includes C H 3 C N and also S F 5 C L. So, the other kind of symmetric top is the oblate symmetric top. Examples of oblate we can write C H C L 3 that is chloroform, we can have B F 3, B C L 3 or benzene. So, for oblates we have I A equals I B and I A and I B are less than I C. So, you can see in prolate we had I A which is less than I B equals I C, but in oblate the largest moment of inertia this I C is unequal to the other two that is I A and I B. So, unless one calculates the moment of inertia along the principal axis, it will not be obvious whether a molecule is a prolate or an oblate. However, prolate or oblate normally represents the molecular shape. So, we can say the prolate is rod like and oblate is disc like. So, let us take the examples of C H 3 C L and C H C L 3. So, let us draw the molecules. So, we have carbon, chlorine and 3 hydrogens in the first case and in the other case we have carbon, hydrogen and 3 chlorine atoms. So, as we know CHCl3 that is oblate and CHCCl that is prolate. So, if we look carefully into CH3Cl, the major mass is coming from the carbon atom and the chlorine atom or we can say the major mass is distributed along the C C L bond. The masses of hydrogens are negligible as compared to that of the carbon and the chlorine atom. So, it has more of a rod like shape, but the major masses are distributed along the C C L bond. On the other hand, if we consider 
chloroform, the major masses are distributed between the three chlorine atoms and the carbon atom. So, CHCLCR chloroform has a disc like shape. So, we can also see that the linear molecule can also be considered as prolate as a linear molecule has a rod like shape. So, it also matches the shape and we can say I A which is equal 0 is less than I B equals I C. So, the final category we have is asymmetric top or asymmetric rotor. In fact, a vast majority of molecules are asymmetric. So, examples of asymmetric top are water that is H 2 O, hydrogen peroxide or the one that is shown here in this figure. So, for asymmetric rotor we can write I A not equal to I B not equal to I C and also I A is the lowest value of the moment of inertia. So, I A is less than I B which is less than I C. So, let us go back to the linear polyatomic molecules. In fact, we have already solved the rotational problem for the linear system in case of diatomic molecules. The solution is the same as the diatomics. It does not matter how many atoms are there on the line. The rotational spectrum will look the same. The characteristics of these molecules in terms of moment of inertia are identical. So, we can write I A equals 0, I B equals I C. This means the rotational energy levels for a linear polyatomic system is going to be identical as the diatomic molecule. So, for diatomic molecules we got nu bar j equals b times j times j plus 1, if we ignore the centrifugal distortion. The rotational constant b as we know is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia. So, we can write b is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia. This moment of inertia here is associated to the b and c axis because i a equals 0. So, which are the same. So, I B equals I C and because I B equals I C they cannot be distinguished. The difference between a diatomic linear molecule and a triatomic linear molecule is the triatomic molecule is larger. So, the moment of inertia will be greater as we know I is given by summation small i m i r i squared. So, the more atoms are there on a line the greater will be the moment of inertia, but does this larger moment of inertia reflect on the rotational spectrum. So, because i is greater it means the rotational constant b is going to be smaller. As the spectral lines are separated by 2 b or the spectral lines are 2 b apart, the spectral lines in polyatomic systems will be much closer together. That means, they are much closer compared to what they were in case of the diatomic system. This is similar to a particle in a box system. The larger the box, the closer are the energy levels. In polyatomic molecules, the rotational wave function can spread over much larger region. So, the energies will be smaller and the energy levels will be closer together. 
So, let us look into a molecule a triatomic linear molecule that is O C S. So, we have a triatomic linear molecule O C S. So, O C S has one oxygen atom, one carbon atom and a sulfur atom all in a line. The sulfur atom is much heavier than both the carbon and the oxygen atoms. So, the center of mass will lie somewhere along the C s bond. So, we can define the distances r 0, r c and r s such that r 0 is the distance by how much the oxygen atom is separated from the center of mass and we can say the carbon atom is r c distance away from the center of mass and the heaviest atom that is the sulfur is r s distance away from the center of mass. So, the condition that enables us to identify the center of mass is m oxygen r oxygen. So, it is not 0 that is O plus m carbon r carbon equals m sulfur r sulfur. So, we are interested in the structure of the molecule. Remember rotational spectroscopy gives us the structure in terms of bond length. So, we are not really interested in what the distances are from the center of mass, but we are interested in what the bond lengths are. So, we can define the bond lengths in terms of the distances. So, we can write R C O equals R O minus R C. In other words, I can write R O equals R C O plus R C. So, we can also write R C S equals R S plus R C. So, from this we can write R S equals R C S minus R C. So, now if we compute the moment of inertia, let us see what we get. So, using this expression and these two expressions, we can write m o r c o plus r c plus m c r c equals m s r c s minus r c. So, from here we can write if we take r c common. So, we can write m o plus m c plus m s equals m s m c s minus m o r c o. Now, if I write the total mass that is m o plus m c plus m s equals capital M, I can write m r c equals m s r c s minus m o r c o. In other words, I can write r c equals m s r c s minus m o r c o divided by capital M. So, now we know that the moment of inertia for this linear triatomic molecule is given by I equals m 
O R O squared plus M C R C squared plus M S R S squared. So, now we can write M O and R 0 we can write as R C O plus R C squared then I have M C R C squared plus M S and R S I can write as R C S minus R C squared. So, now we can simplify and write M O R C O squared plus M O R C squared plus 2 M O R C O R C plus M C R C squared plus M S R C S squared plus M S R C squared minus 2 M S R C S R C. So, if I take the R C squared common, I can write M O plus M C plus M S plus M O R C O squared plus M S R C S squared minus 2 R C M S R C S minus M O R C O. So, now we have already found out an expression for R C. So, if we replace R C with this expression, what we will arrive at is I equals M O R C O squared plus m s r c s squared minus we will have m o r c o minus m c r c s whole squared divided by capital M where capital M is m o plus m c plus m s. Now, the question is can we determine the two bond lengths the C O and the C S bond length from the calculation of the rotational constant B from the spectrum. Because if we get B we know we can get I and I is a function of the bond length. So, the question is can we obtain both the bond lengths. If we only have the value of B for O C S that is for 16 O 12 C 32 S, we cannot get both the bond lengths. For example, the B for this molecule is 0 0.202864 wave numbers, but the moment of inertia has two unknowns in it, the two bond lengths. So, we cannot from one value of rotational constant B, we cannot get the bond lengths. So, we need two values of B. So, we can get a second value of B if we isotopically substitute the sulfur atom by 34 sulfur. And the value of this isotopically substituted molecule is 0 0.197910 because it has different mass that means it has different moments of inertia. So, it will have a different rotational constant as we see instead of 0 0.022864 it is now 0 0.197910. But as we have discussed on the lecture on isotopic substitution that the bond length will not be different that is the structure of the molecule will not differ for the isotopes. Thus, with the two rotational constants, we can set up two different equations in which we have two unknowns and then we can solve them simultaneously to get the 
C O and the C S bond length. So, if we solve, we will get this R C O as 1.165 angstrom and R C S as 1.58 angstrom.